So just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should. What's up nerds? My name's Sam and this is Big Nerds Wargaming. And today we're talking about 3D printing. That's right. I have the new Bamboo Labs A1 with the AMS and I'm just doing some prints here and it got me thinking. Um, so a lot of people have been seeing this printer. It's uh, kind of taken the internet by storm. It's super popular, everybody loves it. It's like the most turnkey FDM printer out there. But I wanted to talk about how it applies to Wargaming and if it is a better choice for you as opposed to a resin printer. Now, first of all, I'm just gonna say FDM printers are great for printing things like terrain because it's really durable, it doesn't break, and um, you're working with plastic and you can usually print larger pieces such as like this ice rock or this Necron monolith. However, nice. However, you end up uh, sacrificing print quality for durability. Now, full disclosure, these pieces here, which I'm showing a close up of, these are printed on my old printer, my Anycubic Chiron, and the results on these are not bad. I, I think it, it's a fine printer, but I'm really curious to see how the Bamboo Lab prints terrain. But I did want to compare a couple things and just show the difference between FDM and resin. So this is a building for Legions Imperialis, or that scale, and I printed this with my resin printer. And the reason I did that is because I knew that this is a small model and it has lots of detail, and I really wanted that detail to show. So resin seems to be a good choice for that. Now these, on the other hand, um, this is like a alien plant, and this is printed on my FDM printer. And you can see the layer lines are not that noticeable, and for terrain, this would look fine on the table, especially if you airbrush painted it and. Um, kind of did a, a little highlight and that'd be great. So I really like to generally use FDM printers for terrain, resin printers for miniatures. Now this brings me to the main topic of this video. I have been seeing a crazy trend online where people are printing miniatures with the Bamboo Labs A1 minis or A1s. And I think that's partially because these Bamboo Lab printers are really, really popular right now. So a lot of people are buying them because they're really beginner friendly. So a lot of new people coming into 3D printing are buying these printers thinking that they're gonna be great for printing miniatures and terrain and everything they need, like a one-stop shop. And I think that's probably not the case, but we're gonna find out. So we're gonna put these two printers to the test by printing the same miniature from Trench Crusade, one in resin and one in PLA. The one in resin we're gonna be printing on a Anycubic Mono 4K, and the one in PLA we're gonna be printing with the Bamboo Lab A1. Now I kind of know what the results are going to look like with the Bamboo Lab um, right off the bat with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. However, we're going to be putting on the 0.2 millimeter nozzle and then printing that miniature because I already know that the 0.4 millimeter nozzle is likely not going to cut it for miniatures, but I want to see how good of detail we can get with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle and uh, some lower layer heights. So we're going to queue up that print and we're going to queue up one of the resin and then we're just going to take a look at them and compare and you can decide for yourself if you think the Bamboo Lab printers are a good option for you for getting into 3D printing for wargaming or if resin printers are more um, what you're looking for if you're looking more for miniatures or if you want something that can kind of do both. So let's find out together. All right, so we're printing with resin and I have a pre-supported file from the creators of the Trench Crusade. So slicing this in the Anycubic slicer with the 0.05 millimeter layer height. And just doing a quick check, making sure everything looks good. And we export this and send it off to the printer. So I just printed this with standard resin. Give it a good shake before we get started. Next, I fill the vat up to the fill line. And then we pop the top back on and queue it up. And then in about three and a half hours, we'll have a mini ready for curing.
So after the print, I take a look and pull it off the plate. So far, things look pretty good. After that, I have to wash the print in alcohol because there's a lot of excess uncured resin that I want to get off the surface. And this is important so that the model comes out clear and all the detail is preserved. When the model's done washing, I pull it out and remove it from the build plate. To help with removing the supports, I like to soak it in some lukewarm tap water for a minute or two. This will get the supports nice and soft and the model will just peel off of them really easily. These supports come off really easy. It varies depending on the model and the creator and how it's supported. But I can say that these are well supported and they did a good job. And then I let this dry and cure it under some UV light. Now to print the same model in the PLA with Bamboo Lab. First of all, choose my quality settings. So I changed the nozzle to point two millimeters and then I set the quality to point uh, zero eight millimeter layer height. And I position the model in a way that I think will be well supported and generate some tree supports. And then we slice our model. So then doing a quick inspection, it looks like everything's gonna be well supported. To preview the layers. And the only way to find out if this is going to work is to send it off to the printer. And after about three hours, it's coming along pretty nicely. And after four hours, the print is done and we're ready to remove it. I gotta say, I really like having the magnetic build plate on these new printers. Makes taking off the model really easy. This is where I started to run into issues because the supports did not come off as easy as the resin supports. Now this may be partially uh, how I supported it and the settings I used, but I did have to use the knife and the pliers and carefully remove all the supports, which is super tedious and a huge headache. All right, folks, while well, my experiment is complete, um, I managed to remove all the pieces the best I could from the supports for the FDM Mini, and I actually glued it back together. Uh, but if you compare these side by side, you can see that um, the FDM Mini is missing a few of the finer detail pieces that broke off in the supports and I just lost them and don't know where they are. Uh, I did try my best to remove them carefully and glue this thing together so that it's a complete model just to you know, say that I was able to print a whole model. Um, and while the detail is super impressive for an FDM printer, it's actually better than I was expecting it. Um, the resin is a clear winner, obviously. Uh, because that's what this kind of printer is designed to do, is to, designed to print minis. And I purposely chose a more spindly looking character um, just to see how doable it would be to try to print in FDM. Because often I see online um, people saying that, oh, you can print minis just fine on a bamboo printer. They're printing things like Space Marines and Rhino tanks and um, other kind of more bulky models. And I feel like it's a little misleading. Um, and I thought, Trench Crusade would be a great thing to try to demonstrate printing uh, these minis for because I know that that game has a lot of uh, attention lately and a lot of people are looking into getting into it. And it's a game where you have to print your minis unless you signed up and did like the physical pledge in their Kickstarter. But most people are going to be printing their own uh, warbands. And I know a lot of people are buying bamboo printers nowadays and they think, oh, maybe I can print my warband on there. And yes, technically you can but your results aren't gonna look that great. Uh, I am trying one more time to print it um, with those changed settings. 
I doing a, I'm doing 100% infill, some lighter supports, but I can already see that we have some failures uh, happening where the, uh, the model's not attaching to the supports, the supports are too low, and it's just kind of printing in the air, so that's where we have some of this um, stringing happening, and, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna see what it looks like when it pops off, but uh, I think this one is gonna be uh, a better representation of what we can do on the FDM um, for something like this. But don't take my word for it. I'll, I'll give you guys a close look at both of these and you can let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video and you like what we do here on the channel and you wanna support us, give a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section what you think of this video. And also don't forget to subscribe. We are almost at 2000 subscribers and it would be great if we could get there soon. All right, well, that's all for today. And uh, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.